Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Nightrun Studio, and so far in this series we've created a quest board that we can visit in order to accept quests. We can then complete quests, like visiting the Green Hills, come on back, and see that now when we click on it, we've actually completed those quests. That said, there's no ability to turn them in yet, and that's exactly where we're headed in this video. Let's make it so we have a complete tab that allows us to turn in quests on completion. Let's get started. Now in order to complete quests, we're going to need some sort of a hub where we can come to turn them in. Now we've already created that in our quest board, so let's continue to expand on what that script can do. When we head inside here, we're going to create a serialized private quest scriptable object reference. We're going to call this one quest to turn in. That way any quest board could have a quest to turn in and it doesn't have to match the one that's being offered. Now in order to extend this, we want our update method to not just check if the player is in range and is pushing a button, but also, first of all, to prioritize turning in quests if there are any that are complete. To do this, we first of all need to find out if there's a quest that can be turned in. So let's create a bool in here called can turn in, and this is going to have a couple of parameters. First of all, we want to make sure that quest to turn in is not null. However, we also want to actually check on our quests. To do this, we're going to need to talk to the quest manager, which presents a problem. The quest manager exists within scenes, it's persistent, but our quest boards only are in specific scenes. Now we could solve this problem by making our quest manager into a singleton, but as we've talked about in other spots in this series, we're trying to avoid that. So instead, we're going to use a new type of event. We're going to add this to our quest events, and we'll call it isQuestCompleted, and then we'll invoke it. What this event is going to do is allow us to actually pass in a quest SO and get something back, which is unlike any other type of event we've done so far. So here in our brackets, let's just type in quest to turn in, as we're going to want to query whether or not that one's complete. Now if, when we query this event, we get a true result back, that means that our can turn in bool will be set to true. Next then, let's go into quest events and create this event. This one is going to be public static, just like our other events. However, where it's different is that rather than being an action, this one is going to be a function. An action is sort of like a void method, it returns nothing, whereas a function is capable of returning something. So here, like we would with our action event, we're going to pass in a quest scriptable object, but then we're going to tell it what parameter it expects back, and in this case it's going to be a bool, either the quest is completed or it's not. We'll call this one isQuestComplete. Now that we've created this event, we need to make sure that there's actually somebody listening to it in order to give a response. That's where our quest manager comes in. So in Quest Manager, we're going to create an onEnable method where we'll subscribe to the isQuestCompleted event. Anytime that query goes out then, we'll call a new method called isQuestComplete, which we'll create in just a second. We're then just going to copy paste this into our onDisable method, make sure that it is a subtraction sign here so that we can unsubscribe when we disable this script. At this point, I'm just going to do a little optional house cleaning as this script is getting quite large, and I'm going to create a region called QuestAcceptLogic, and then down here I'm just going to type endRegion. This just gives us the ability to use the plus minus signs in order to minimize this logic and just keep things a little easier to see what we're working with. Now we can go ahead and make that method that will respond to our isQuestComplete event. This one will be a public bool, as it will return true or false, called isQuestComplete, and it's going to take in a quest scriptable object, the one we're checking. Here, we're just going to look at our quest progress super dictionary, and we'll say if quest progress dot, here we're going to use a try get value function, and we'll pass in the quest scriptable object. Remember, try get value just makes it so that if it does in fact contain this value, it'll spit out a result, and if not, we won't get any errors. In this case, if it finds our quest SO in the quest progress super dictionary, then we want to pass out a new variable, which here we're just going to call progress dictionary. Remember, it's a dictionary of dictionaries, so we're getting one of those second dictionaries. Now you may be wondering why I put an if in front of this, as we're just spitting out a progress dictionary right now, but we're actually going to make it so that if, and here I'll put an exclamation mark, so if it does not find this quest scriptable object in the quest progress super dictionary, we'll just return a false value. The quest can't be complete, we don't even have it yet. That said, if it does find one, we want to continue. Now before we go checking if all of these objectives are complete, we first want to make sure that we have up-to-date information. So we're going to use a for loop here, and it's going to just go through every objective it can find in this specific quest scriptable object's objectives. And all we want to do is use our method from the other video called update objective progress to make sure that all of the information in the progress dictionary is current and updated in case we've completed something since we last checked. Now that we've got that up to date information, we can use it to actually check and see whether or not this quest is done. So here we'll loop through all our objectives one last time. 
And yes, again, it's the same quest scriptable object with its objectives. And now to find out whether the objective is complete, we just want to ask if this objective, so here we'll just type in progress dictionary, the one we found up above, and the specific objective we're looking at, and ask if its value is less than the objective's required amount. If it is, then we haven't completed it yet. So if this progress dictionary says we've only collected two mushrooms, but the required amount is three, then we want to return false. Now, if we actually make it through all of that, we have the quest in our quest progress super dictionary, we update it, and then we find that each of its objectives are greater than or equal to their required amounts, we can return true. This quest is complete. Now that we've completed that long string of logic, we can head back to our quest board. You'll notice I've still got the red squigglies. Don't forget to save all as we were in three different scripts and we want to make sure they're all updated. We've now got enough logic to properly evaluate whether we can turn in a quest here. We've checked to see if this quest board actually has a quest that it wants turned in, and we've checked whether we've met the requirements. At this point, we can add an if else statement. If can turn in, and we'll just create room for logic there. And then else, meaning if we can't turn it in because we haven't completed it or the NPC just doesn't want it. If that's the case, then we want to call our old logic here of quest events on quest offer requested so this NPC can give you whatever quest he does have. Then we can come back up here and figure out our logic for what we're going to do if we can turn it in. Now in that case, we're going to create one final event. This one will be in our quest events again. We're going to call this on quest turn in requested. And here we'll invoke it, passing along the quest we want to turn in. All right, we need to go ahead and write that event now. Now there's nothing fancy going on here. This is going to be very similar to how we offered a quest. We'll just make a public static action, which is going to pass along a quest SO, and then we're going to call it on quest turn in requested. Now that we've created that, we're ready to create something to actually do the listening. Now in this case, we're actually going to head to our quest log UI. Remember, it's what's responsible for all our user interface. And since we'll complete the quest by clicking a button, we don't want to go to the quest manager just yet. We want to start off here in quest log UI. So in our on enable method, let's go ahead and subscribe to this new event. Whenever this event goes out, we're going to want to call a new method called show quest turn in. We'll then make sure that we unsubscribe from it in on disable. We're just going to come down below here to write this method. We've got our show quest offer up top, so it makes sense to do the complete down below. Let's first do a little housekeeping though. I'm just going to make a region here called show quest methods and then an end region. And then I'm going to make one other region for on button clicked methods for the accept, decline, and complete. That way we can just close these up and make things much easier to work with here. All right, let's go ahead and write that new method now. So this one's a public void method called show quest turn in, and it's going to take in a quest SO. We're just going to call this one incoming quest SO. Now, first off, we just want to store the quest SO we just passed in. So we'll make sure that this script's quest SO is equal to the incoming quest. So the first thing we want to do when we're trying to turn in a quest is actually show that quest in our log. We've already got a method that does this, the one that happens when we click on a slot, and it's called handle quest clicked. So let's just pass this quest SO along so that it can work its magic and display our quest name and rewards and all of that. Once that's done, we want to set the correct buttons up. Here, we're just going to get our canvas, the one for our complete canvas, first of all, and turn it on. Remember again that we have a helper method that handles making it interactable and turning it on. We'll also then set the canvas state for our accept and decline canvas groups, turning those ones off. Finally, when this is called, we want to make sure that we actually turn on the quest canvas itself. Otherwise, when we go to the quest board, nothing will happen. Back in Unity, we'll just want to go to our quest board and make sure that it actually has a quest to turn in. I'm going to put my Visit the Green Hills quest in there. Then when we get in the game, I can accept a quest, visit the Green Hills in order to complete it. Now when I go back, you'll see that it's complete, and there's a complete button here. I could click on it as it's interactable, but it doesn't do anything just yet. That's our next step. So let's go back into our quest log UI, and now we just need some logic for something to happen when we click complete. First of all, we can use our regions here to close up the show quest methods and open up the button methods. You can see here that we have the on complete quest clicked that we created last time, but so far all it does is refresh our list of quests. We want it to do a little more than that. First of all, we want to talk to our quest manager and tell it that we've completed the quest so that it can update its information. We also need to make sure that we let it know which quest we want to update. That's all we need to do here for now, and if you want, you can close up this region to keep things nice and tidy. Then let's head over to the quest manager. Here we'll just scroll down a little bit below that method we just made that checks if the quest is completed, and we're going to make a new public void method called complete quest. And of course, it will have to know what quest it's taking in in order to do that. 
Now, first off, let's just remove this quest from our dictionary. So we'll get the quest progress super dictionary and tell it that it should remove any entry for this quest SO. This is where in our next video we'll also grant a reward, but for now I'm just going to put a note in so that we know to come back to this. And while we're here, just for organization's sake, let's make another region called quest complete logic and we can put both of those methods into it, then close them up to keep things looking clean. Now if you were to run this right now, some things would be working well, but here's one little problem. If you were to click decline and then come back again, you'll notice that it now says no quests available. It's almost like it thinks we accepted it even though we didn't. Let's pop into our quest log UI to see what's going on. So to get to the bottom of this, let's go into our display objectives method. And here, each time that we are, go to display our objectives, we tell our quest manager to update the objective progress, which sounds like a great idea. We want to display the most recent information. However, in our quest manager, when it runs this method, it thinks it's running it because we just collected a new quest, and so it's adding this quest to the quest progress dictionary, regardless of whether or not we've accepted it. This is a really easy fix. Right now, if our quest progress does not contain the quest, we add it. Let's just get rid of this line that adds it automatically, as we now do that in our accept quest method. Instead, if it doesn't contain it, we just want to return as there's nothing worth updating if we don't have the quest yet. All right, no setup necessary. We can now go to our quest board. We can decline if we want, reopen it, and it's still there. Now we can accept it. We'll see that it appears in our quest log where we can click on it if we want to see the details. We're still going to use decline for now to close the log, but let's go ahead and complete the quest by visiting the green hills. When we return to the board, we can see it's updated saying we've completed it, we can click complete, and now the quest actually disappears from our log, and it's also been removed from our quest progress dictionary. The big thing now is we just want to get these rewards and have them actually be given to the player. That's where we're headed in our very next video. We're almost there, everybody. Hang in, we're going to have this quest system complete yet. Hope to see you in the next video. Until then, though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.